East Coast Line of Kereta Api Tanah Melayu is a line that cut through the middle of Peninsular Malaysia, passing through the villages, a small town and inhospitable lush rainforest nicknamed the Jungle Railway. East Coast Line of Kereta Api Tanah Melayu with the length of about more than 500 kilometers connecting Tumpat in the Malaysian state of Kelantan with the town of Pasir Mas where the track meet the railway to Thailand and Kemas where the line meet the rest of the Peninsula Malaysian railway network. This line is different than the East Coast Rail Line which is under construction scheduled to open in 2026. The reason you want to watch this video is to know why the British colonial government built the expensive railway in the middle of the jungle in the middle of nowhere. It didn't serve the three capitals of the eastern coast of Peninsula Malaysia which are Kuantan, Kuala Terengganu and Kota Baru either. The largest town throughout the line is Mentakap which pair with Temerlo which is located in the middle of Kuala Lumpur and the port of Kuantan on the eastern coast. There are two major reasons why this railway line was built in the middle of the jungle to exploit the natural resources and to obtain the geostrategic importance. Before the railway construction, the main transportation mode in the British Malaya in the 19th and 20th century is the waterways. Steamboats and sampan serve the main towns along the main rivers and the coastal towns where mining and agriculture activities are. Kuala Lipis is the major producer of gold and timber in the British Malaya. The map in 1930s Malaya looks like this. Kuala Lipis actually served as the capital of the state of Pahang before lost the title to Kuantan in 1955. Apart from connecting the capital state of Pahang in the colonial times with the rest of the peninsula, the hinterland of Pahang and Kelantan are opened up for tin mining and rubber plantation, two of the most important exports of British Malaya. The reason why the East Coast uh, Rail did not serve Terengganu simply due to relatively less lucrative economic incentive. Before the discovery of oil in the 1970s, Terengganu was mainly a fishing economy with small-scale farming and fruit plantation. In the 20th century Malaya, fish and fruit uh, were mainly for local consumption and not really valuable much for export. And thus the economic value of the tropical fruits and fish is far lower than tin and rubber. Thus. There is no need for an expensive railway to be constructed in Terengganu in the early 20th century. About the geostrategic importance, people who live in rubber plantation and tin mines need something to eat every day. Kelantan is the second largest producer of rice after Kedah in the 20th century Malaya. By constructing the rail line between Kelantan and the southern part of the peninsula connecting the paddy field with the tin mines and the rubber plantation, the food supply is guaranteed. In a time where road transport was slow and sea transport was slower. After the economic boom after the independence, increasing number of Malaysians could afford to buy cars and motorcycles. As the new highways were constructed and the road is getting better and better, uh, buses are faster than train with a competitive price. Plus, think about uh, low-cost airlines, same price with a bus but much faster. As a result, the number of passengers taking the train on the East uh, Coast Line dwindled. Rubber and palm oil were no longer transported by rail since lorry is faster and more flexible and cheaper. Clearly, this rail line didn't make money. Then, why it is still in operation? Reason number one, there are rural communities who are dependent on train services to the nearby towns for study, for work, or go to the nearby town for grocery shopping. On February 2022, there are news of one of the train in the East Coast Line skipped the train halt at Kuala Gris, Kelantan, 
caused about 100 students miss their first day in school after two years of movement restriction throughout Malaysia. Uh, of course, you say there are roads, uh, right? You can take your car or motorcycle. But think about it, rural roads are often uh, narrow or dimly light. Uh, do I not mention that the lorry that carry rubber and palm oil? 91,506 dan uh, mengikut pecahan daerah Furthermore, taking train is safer and it's cheaper too The dying local bus services will never operate in the rural areas due to financial strain uh, Actually, I have a video about it, you can watch it later And the reason number two is political decision as many things uh, happen in Malaysia even when the train passengers decline every year, closing down the operation will never be a popular decision. Trains provide not only uh, passenger services but also employment to the people, to the local communities and also employment in the tourism industry. Investment in rail construction and rail improvement cost some cities that long declined uh, to be rejuvenated as a popular tourist city. Ipoh Perak in the western coast of Peninsular Malaysia is the best example. This particular station that I visited myself, a Triang Station, is located within the constituency of the current Prime Minister of Malaysia. Shutting down this line will be an unpopular decision. To maintain the operation and keeping the ticket price low, government has allocated about 32 million ringgit in the previous budget to subsidize the East Coast Rail network together with the separate allocation for track rehabilitation project which improve the rail and construct new station buildings with the intention to connect the rural communities and improving uh, local tourism that is the reason you can still take a ride on this 89 years old railway on a brand new train made in partly made in china but actually assembled in malaysia if you want to take a ride on the KTM East Coast Line, you can visit any station throughout the 500 km something line from Gemas Negeri Sembilan to Tumpat Kelantan. Preferably depart from major towns since the amenities in and around the station in the major towns are better. I choose to start the journey at a Gemas station about 210 km from Kuala Lumpur. You can take the modern ETS train from Kuala Lumpur to come to Gemas and the trip take about 2 hours but currently at the time of the speaking right now on February 2022 ETS arrival in Gemas did not match with the departure of train to the east coast uh, you just better uh, drive a car to come here People with disabilities can get around easy in Gemas station with dedicated parking, with a lift and also some tactile for people with a vision blind. For people with learning disabilities, there are enough signboard around so you don't need to ask anyone to go uh, wherever you want. You can buy the ticket from the ticket machine too. Before I forget, Malaysian citizens who are people with disabilities or senior citizens and government pensioners can get half the ticket price. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for taking a ride on this historic lane. See you in the next video.